Hey gang, hope everyone is having a good night so far. This is your boy Tim. I'm testing out some products tonight. Now these are just gonna be first impressions of these products. And uh, full disclaimer on these products, I did receive them free as samples to go ahead and try out, let you guys know what my impressions are that in no way is going to change um, my personal opinions on these products. Cause I'm gonna tell you how it is. I'm gonna let you know what I like, what I don't like. Um, but there are some things to consider with these products and that is that their price point is lower. So you're going to be looking at products that are gonna be more affordable. Um, oftentimes, a lot of Colonel Conk products are located in some of your brick and mortar stores. Um, I know that one brick and mortar store that nearby in Tulsa that it's located at is the Gadget Company here in Tulsa. So if you're ever in Tulsa and you need some shaving products on the go, they do have razor blades, they have shaving creams, soaps, colognes, brushes, razors, they carry a lot of Mercure products too. But that is just some of the stuff that I'm going to be using and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to be utilizing tonight. So first off for the razor, this is simply called the Conk DE double-edged razor. Uh, I have not researched this razor. I know absolutely nothing of it. What I can tell you based on the feel and the construction is that I believe the handle is uh, nickel plated brass. It, it's, it's hefty, it's got some weight to it, though it is not as heavy as my all stainless steel Weber PH. I love this razor, it's a great razor. The head is very similar to Mercure. You're also gonna notice similar head style, though the gap on this does look a little bit bigger, so I think it's gonna translate to more aggressiveness. I'm not 100% sure. It might be extremely smooth. Um, this is lighter than this, but this also does look better than this. Um, the construction on this is very nice. Um, I actually like the construction on this better than the Marvel uh, by fine accoutrements that I'd received. It had a lot of uh, machining issues and some problems. I believe the head, a lot of modern razors like Merc Mercure, Parker does this as well, where if they have a razor that they're selling, the handle is usually going to be nickel plated brass or chrome plated brass, etc. The head is usually going to be made of Zamac or pot metal. Um, and it's usually plated in the same finish, you know, nickel or whatever. Um, I'm guessing that's what the head is, but I can't tell you 100% sure. It might be nickel plated brass. That would be a nice surprise. But I do like the design, the style. It does look really cool. And it was all packaged very well. All these products were sent to me by Colonel Conk for the exception of the brush, which is a vintage rubber set 200-4. And the bristles might look like um, they need to be replaced, but actually I've been getting some great shaves out of this and I love the length of the barbershop handle. It's fantastic, I love it. Though Reyes, I see you're on and this is something that I'm probably gonna end up sending to you. I thought maybe I could try my hand at doing some restoration myself on this, but I'm not 100% sure I wanna risk it. Um, but the brush itself is great. I do know that the handle is gonna need another coating, protective coating to protect it from the water, but it whips up a great lather and it's got some great length to it. So I really like it. Going to be using that for the soap. Going to be using this. So I have an already pre-soaked glycerin puck in here. It's their Bay Rum. Um, it smells fantastic. I'm a big fan of, you guys know two things that I absolutely love that are staples in my den are Bay Rums and citrusy kind of scents. And this is a Bay Rum scent and it smells very nice. It's a lot smoother than some of the um, other Bay Rums that I've used in the past. A lot of them have a very distinct clovey smell. Others are just a little bit sharp on the face. For whatever reason, they cause some facial irritation for me and I'm not easily irritated. I'm not allergic to anything. So I'm excited to see what this is going to do here because it does smell smoother and I think it's gonna translate to just dealing with my skin better and glycerin anyway is good for your face. And I believe the pucks themselves are extremely affordable. I believe they kind of run typically at like three, 350 for a puck, maybe even less than that. Um, typically that's what you're gonna see with glycerin pucks is they're more affordable. When I first started out in the hobby, I started out with um, <laughs> Bay Rums and Blondes. Um, but when I first started out in the hobby, I um, started off with some glycerin pucks. I started off with Williams soap, which does have tallow. 
But then I also had Vanderhagen sets, which included Vanderhagen pucks, which I utilized for a long time before I branched off into more artisan type stuff. And I loved the performance of those. I got really good performance. It was the first time that I was using it. And I was like, wow, this, this is really incredible. So I'm excited to use that. It doesn't fit all the way down in the cup. That's just because it is a wider puck. They do make smaller ones. But I could totally melt this down and put it in there. But I didn't want to mess with the puck at all for my first impressions and my overall review that I'm going to be posting. But that's what I'm going to be using for the soap. For the aftershave, I'm going to be using the matching Bay Rum. Look at this bottle. It's all this frosted glass. It looks really pretty. I've seen these at the Gadget Company shop. And another one that I'd really like to have, I smell the almond one. That smells fantastic. Um, but I, you know me and, and citrus are like this. And they have a lime one. And I smelled that at the Gadget Company. And I've been on the fence about getting it ever since. And I'll probably get it if this turns out to be really good. I did just put a little bit of this on my fingers and let it dry down and kind of was smelling it periodically. And I really like the scent. Um, so I'm excited what that's going to be like. And I think this is also going to have that more smoothing, mellow effect rather than something that's really harsh. Yo, Thirsty Badger, what's up? <laughs> Glad to see you coming in tonight. Um, and that's totally true with glycerin pucks. It's one of the reasons why typically I prefer tallow is because tallow just is more nourishing. It's It retains a lot more water. It's more moisturizing for your face. So typically your face, especially with, you're going to notice with glycerin pucks or vegan, typically vegan type soaps, is that they're just not going to have the slickness that you're used to maybe with tallow. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't get grave shave out of them. And especially for the price here, guys, when we're talking about a lot of tallow-based soaps being in that typically $12 and up bracket, and we're talking about glycerin-based pucks like the Colonel Conk. Uh, we're talking about the, the price. We're talking about this is easy to get. It's easy to get in multiple scents, which if you're someone that likes variety, which obviously I do, then this might be the ticket for you. Now, like I said, I haven't tried this out, so it might be terrible. And I might tell you guys, you know what, just go ahead and save your money. Maybe get some uh, Williams mug. but Because um, you can actually make that a great performer if you add glycerin to it, ironically enough. But um, I have an Astra Superior Platinum Blade in here. It's brand new, never used. Excited to go ahead and try it out with this razor. Um, usually that's kind of the comparison guideline as I use. I get a lot of consistent performance with Astras, though recently even better in Gillette Silver Blues, but I'm out of those. So, And it's kind of cool because my only real product that I've had of Colonel Conk is this White Lightning Um jar right here that used to hold their old bay rum they've recently reformulated the bay rum aftershave i was told and this is the new formulation right here so what you see on your typical shelves is probably going to be the old formulation i have the newest one so and so far i like the scent so we're going to see how that's going to do but i think it's kind of cool that i found this i was like oh i gotta have that it's a it's a wet shaving you know vintage item and i found this while tiff and i were out antiquing so it's kind of cool you also know that I have the Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements version of that as well. The uh, Their um, whiskey jug full of their Atomic Age Bay Rum, which I like, but sometimes it can really burn my face. If you're ever wondering why I talk about Bay Rums a lot, yet I don't post a lot of material utilizing some Bay Rums, it's because for whatever reason, some of the spices that are in there or the ingredients can really burn my face and not in a good way sometimes. Sometimes they affect my face, sometimes they don't. It's a weird thing. But I'm not using, of course, the cube or anything because I really want to showcase what the soap can do. So I'm going to be doing that. My brush has been soaking for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and start just... I'm not going to actually build my lather from here. I'm just going to load up my brush. We're actually going to be building up the lather with my trusty uh, Douglas Smith Pottery lathering bowl. I love this thing. It's very similar probably to the performance you're going to get from a Captain's Choice, but it's more palmable. It's a little bit smaller and it feels great. I've got pretty large hands. So here we go. You guys listen to that kind of load in there. And really with these longer brushes, instead of using concentric circles on your face when you're building that lather, if you're one to face lather, you really more kind of brush it on. These act more like brushes. Well, I'm happy to see you guys dropping in. I know it's kind of late, so I really wasn't expecting a lot of people here, but you can already see that I'm just loading my brush 
and there's already a significant amount of lather that's popping up. That's the nice thing about glycerin is usually the lather is not a problem. You're going to be getting a decent lather out of your glycerin pucks. And like I said, they're just affordable. Um, they last you just as long, typically, in my opinion, as uh, the um, as the tallow soaps. Just really spreading those bristles down so I can really load this sucker up. And then, like I said, we're gonna transfer this. I think we got enough. Let me get a little towel here. Transfer this to my lather bowl. I wanna put a little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl. Just gonna help in building that lather. A little too much water, there we go. And here we go. So I hope you guys are having a good night tonight. I have been <laughs> incredibly busy at work and just trying to get some stuff posted. I haven't had a moment to create some more video content for YouTube lately. Tomorrow I will though, so I'm looking forward to that. And there's a shave meetup going on in Missouri in Springfield that a couple of guys are wanting me to go to, people that I just met online. And uh, I might end up going to that. It's like two and a half hours away, which is not too bad. Yeah, you can already see in there. Lather with a glycerin puck is never usually a problem. And I'm getting, I can already tell, a very nice lather with only a minimal amount of water added in here. Kind of a perspective, there you are. Might add just a little bit more water, get a little bit more volume in there. But this is actually one of my favorite parts of the shave is just building the lather and getting the lather the way that you want it. But I remember when I first started shaving, man, I was adding way too much water. It was kind of soupy. It was kind of, that's the thing is it's always that soap to water ratio is some of the trickiest things to do in uh, shaving, in my opinion. That and the most frustrating thing as well is finding a blade that pairs with everything. Gillette Silver Blues have been great. I thought Astra Superior Platinums were that blade for a while. Uh, but there's just some razors that just don't seem to agree with it. And it sucks because you find a blade that you really like or you find a razor that you really like, but the blades don't work well with it. So you're like, okay, well, don't know what I should be doing with that, but whatever. Yeah, I can tell you this is nice. Smells good. It's unoffensive. It's not overly strong. If you guys know, you know I typically prefer a lot stronger scents because I love to really layer on scents. I love to smell that throughout the day. But if you're someone that, you know, just wants a great shaving experience and a subtle scent, this might be ideal for you. And so far, the lather it whipped up was really good. It feels good on the face. It doesn't feel airy. Sometimes I do get that with some of my tallow base soaps. I get this airy sound whenever you brush it on your face and it drives me crazy. That, to me, usually signals that I'm not going to get the best shave with it. I'm not going to get some of the slickness that I've come to love. That's what I've heard. I've heard Carve is really good. I know Reyes had just recently acquired a Carve. It sounds like he likes it. I've heard some great things. I think the price is a little up there on carbs, though, if my memory serves me right, which has kind of been turning me off from it. And really, a lot of the razors that I have in my current den, doing a great job. Look at all this lather, man. This is having no problems, and I haven't gone back to the bowl, except for once, I think. But yeah. Like I said, with these longer barbershop-type handles and the longer knots, like this particular bore knot, you just brush it on and it's super smooth. Once I figured out how to use the board, just tweaked it just right, let it soak for long enough, I've been getting great performance out of this. And this is a vintage knot that I sterilized, it cleaned, I washed out thoroughly, brushed, uh, broke in, because a lot of the times when you get these vintage brushes, bristles are so stiff and so dry that if you just try to start rubbing them, the, the bristles will fall right out, they'll break apart. You want to go ahead and watch out for that. What I do when I get a vintage brush and I want to utilize it because the knot looks like it's usable, I let it soak for a, a while, like an hour. Get enough water in there to 
you know, moisturize those bristles. And then I'll just start going back and forth, back and forth on my hand or a towel to break in the bristles again. And then I'll rinse and repeat the process until I've got it to where I like it. Now I'm using Conk. That's the name of this particular razor. I think the name, that's what the name was on the box. I thought it was going to be more aggressive than that, but it's not. And it feels like it's pretty efficient. So that's nice. I want to see what it's doing on my face. And if you see a little spot here, that's not because I cut myself today. It's actually when I was shaving the other day with my straight and I nicked a mole right there, a little skin tag. So that is not from this razor tonight. So far it didn't feel harsh or... or uncomfortable or anything like that. Exactly. And that is something that I've done as well is use hair conditioner, let it really absorb into the brish bristles and, and kind of get it back to usable condition. Because old knots are tricky things. They are tricky things. One of the first brushes I ever bought outside of my Burma Shave brush was a vintage brush. Oh, hey, what's up? Colonel Conk in the house. <laughs> Michael, what's up, man? But, and that thing, I hated using that brush. I love the look of it. It was a, It's an EverReady F40. A beautiful looking brush with those typical color palettes from the 50s. But man... It was scratchy, it was uncomfortable, and no matter what I did, conditioner or whatever, it just didn't work. So what I ended up doing is I took the brush and I kept um, wetting and drying, wetting and drying over and over again. Then I took sandpaper and I rubbed the, the edge of the bristles. I closed them in together and I just kept wiping that on sandpaper till it opened up those, those ends. Well, the soap has more glide than I would have expected. And a lot of glycerin pucks, what I have found, is my face feels almost dry. It's, it's kind of a weird thing because immediately you feel hydrated. The glycerin feels great on your face. This is just my experience with Vanderhagen and other pucks that I bought at brick and mortar stores. I've never ordered a puck of glycerin online. And it's just usually the experience is not a, not a particular one that you come back to, but the lather you can see here is not dissipating. It looks good across the face. And it's it's not as slick as some of my tallow-based soaps, the ones that are costing 15, 16 bucks. Um, I don't expect it to, not at this price point. And I'm still getting enough where I can follow up, as you can see, on areas on my face without applying more soap, without applying another thing I'll lather. And I'm really liking this razor. It's really comfortable. It's extremely comfortable. And I thought with the gap, significantly different than, well not significantly different, but noticeably different than my Weber pH, which has been on the aggressive side when I first got it. It felt really aggressive. I felt a lot of that blade. And then I kept fiddling with blades until I found the right combo for it. You can hear though that audio feedback. I'm not getting any hand fatigue because it's not that heavy. It's not as heavy as my Weber pH and it's going good, man. I'm just showcasing some of the stuff that you guys sent on over to me. And so far I'm really pleased with it. This is just a first impression. So it's not a full review. I have not used these products more than right now. So I want to give my full thing after I've really become acquainted with the product. But so far, really impressed. I love the bottle in particular. The bottle for the aftershave. It's got that old school, classy look to it in a frosted glass bottle, which I just love the frosted look on a lot of aftershave bottles. You've got the normal aftershave bottles, like, you know, here's my other Bay Rum from Sterling that I do like, 
Sometimes can burn the face though, but it's just in your typical you know, bottle. They're also one of the more cost effective of the tallow bases out there on the market. Great choice. But then you've got something like that. And that just looks cool. I've always wanted to kind of collect old bottles. That's one of the reasons why I have a few of those whiskey mugs up here as well. Um, but that just looks good. That's something you can reuse for whatever after you run out of the aftershave. And yes, I'm using up, yo, what's up? <laughs> I'm using some products from Colonel Conk. I'm using the Bay Rum Puck. And it is, uh, contains avocado oil, vitamin E, and it's their glycerin pucks, of course. But as you can see, I mean, that soap, the nice thing about me applying the soap to the full face when I'm growing out a beard is that I don't take it out of the beard while I'm in the middle of the shave. So that stays, and I usually don't manipulate it or apply more. So what you're seeing is that it's it's not dissipating, it's not going anywhere, it still looks nice and vibrant, it looks good. And for this price point, I mean, crud, I might go buy me some, some of this stuff, because so far, as you can see, the lather that's whipping up, which is the nice thing, I, again, I reiterate about glycerin-based pucks, is the lather is usually not a problem. You can whip these up into an impressive looking lather, to Mrs. Doubtfire levels pretty quickly. Oh God, I've always wanted to do that. When Tiff gets home, I'm always like, man, I just need to cover my face and in the good lather and hide behind the the, the kitchen. And then she comes home and I'm just like, toodaloo! You know, I got all the lather over my face. If you guys have ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire, I hope you have. You have this, look at this. I mean, the lather smells great. The soap in particular smells great. It's coming on nice. It's coming on thick. It's It feels creamy. It feels good. Um, like I said, you're not going to be getting the same kind of slickness that you're going to be getting from tallow. Um, but see, it, and again, there's debadger. That's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, usually when I'm posting my shave of the days and when I'm talking about products and stuff, that's one of the big things for me is I like strong scents. I like long-lasting scents. Um, but, of course, there are those days, especially when you're going to bed. When I do Shave of the Nights, usually I'll use, sometimes I'll use a lavender finisher. It's great for bed. Or I'll use a product that's not scented as strong um, because I don't want to be offensive when I'm going to bed and, you know, maybe I don't want to be smelling that all night long. But this is a very pleasant one. I really like it. It's not too weak in my opinion. It's not strong. Um, but I like it. It's refreshing. It's a refreshing Bay Rum, which is so weird. It's one of the things that just I find really interesting about Bay Rums is Bay Rum from one artisan to another artisan is not going to be the same kind of Bay Rum. There are subtle changes that are, or significant changes that you're going to be seeing from artisan to artisan. And there are some bay rums that I really like and some bay rums that I'm kind of turned off of because they're they're so strong with one ingredient or the other. And this is a very nice middle ground and it doesn't burn. It doesn't make my skin feel weird, which is one of those things that you can see with bay rums is usually the problem is people with sensitive skin get really nasty burns through bay rum. Which is a bummer because I think bay rum is an iconic masculine scent. It is just something that's been timeless. It's something that's been around forever. Um, when you think of bay rum, you think of, you know, a man. I'm not saying the ladies can't use it because, of course, this would smell wonderful on a woman too. But it's just there's just something distinctly masculine about it. The scent profile and usually the ingredients list in there. As you guys know, right here is usually my tricky spot, so I'm usually really careful right there. Hmm. Feels really smooth. Digging the razor. I've had significantly 
bad first experiences with other razors. Sorry, I'm leaning in close to the mirror because I want to see if I'm getting any irritation, any redness. And I'm not. It feels really good. Oh, for my best of video series, the next one is going to be razors. So best of 2018, I'm going to be showcasing my favorite razors for 2018. I might do an honorable mention. It's kind of like what I did with my soap. Um, but for the most part, I felt like there were certain razors that I gravitated more towards in 2018. I want to be showcasing those and why I really like those razors. Um, but I'm excited for that video. And then I've got a couple product reviews coming up. I'm going to be doing a full review of the Colonel Conk soaps. Uh, before that, I'm going to be doing a full review of both Herc soaps, the stealth that I used recently that you guys saw in the shave of the day. And I'm also going to be doing a full review over Ginger's Garden. And a little insider secret, I may or may not be getting some of the, uh, might be a tallow tester for Zingari Man. So I might have that coming. And I really appreciate all the respect and all of the, the kind words that I've received from the community and just the overall vibe that I've gotten is that people really enjoy the content that I'm posting out there. And people have been extremely supportive, not only by sending me soaps and samples to try, but things to enjoy time and time again. Um, it's been great. I absolutely love this community. It's, it's by far the best community that I've been a part of. And if you guys know... I'm a bit of a nerd, so I've been part of some Star Wars groups in the past because I used to be really into that before all the, the new trilogy stuff. I loved The Force Awakens. Don't get me wrong there. But some of the other stuff that's been poured out after that has just been kind of, it's kind of soured my mood on Star Wars a little bit, which is really unfortunate because there's good messages there about redemption and hope, except for, you know, The Last Jedi really didn't have any of that. feels really good. It's going to be in the rotation, guys. I can already tell you that. Not a full review. This is going to be in the rotation. I absolutely like, I might even like this better than the Weber PH, which is a surprise because I love that razor. Absolutely love that razor, but it's slightly lighter, so less hand fatigue, and it's really efficient, so I'm very pleased with it. Well, as you guys can see, the soap did not dissipate on my mustache, on my beard, anything like that. It stayed it it's it looks great didn't didn't go anywhere at all whoa almost knocked over my brush but now i get to try off and one of the other good things about glycerin is it comes right off when you're ready for that soap to come off and you want to wipe it off you can some of these tallow soaps are they like to cling for dear life to your face But I like this because it's coming off pretty easily. Yo, what's up, Heather? I was about to say, I'm surprised you're still up and around. I thought you had a bedtime. I'm just kidding. Heather, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I love you. But um, happy to see you in the chat. Happy to see all y'all in the chat. Oh, what's up? Taller, t taller tester? Hello, tester. What? No. <laughs> you, you know I had to had to joke around with you a little bit, right? You didn't get be hard with you or something. Okay. So we're good to go on that. The face feels good. With most glycerin, though, I can tell now that the soap is gone and my face just rinse off that I am getting a little resistance while I'm washing down. Doesn't mean anything. All it means is that my face feels fantastic. Uh, it doesn't hurt, doesn't burn or anything like that. But, <laughs> right, I know you want that brush, dadgummit. It's mine. And I used it tonight. Hey, what's up? But, um, but my face feels great. 
but it is there is a noticeable lack of residual slickness in the soap. But again, when we're talking about soaps, even Sterling, which I consider is a great bang for your buck, when we're talking about tallow soaps and just soap performance in general, price to performance ratio, we're talking about like a 350 max puck of soap. I don't even think it costs that much for the Colonel Conk soap pucks. So that's what we're looking at there. Uh, significant difference and honestly for that price you're not going to be missing the residual slickness i and that's the thing i can generally have a lot of respect for soaps aftershaves various products as long as they don't offend as long as they don't hurt my skin as long as they're within that same bracket as far as glycerin to tallow i'll tell you where they level up compared to other products and i can say this is better than the vanderhagen stuff that i used and i think it's cheaper too all right Look at that bottle though. Look, seriously, that, that frosted glass. I love it. And no restrictor, but you can use the tried true method of just putting your finger slightly over the opening and look at that. Just barely any. I don't think it's gonna take much. Got a little bit of that alcoholic burn, but nothing crazy. Yet I still got, you don't hear nothing, do you? Because it got a good shade. But for a Bay Rum, I really like that. Now, this is not going to be the same scent that you're going to be getting with Sterling. This is what I would consider to be more of, yo, Eric, what's up? <laughs> Um, what you might consider to be more of your traditional bay rum, it's a lot stronger and it's got more clove. You can definitely smell more clove. But to me, that's one of the beauties of bay rum is it's so different for every single artisan out there. Some put more citrus, some put more spice. Um, some are at various strength levels. And I would say out of the bay rums that I could probably use on a daily basis, and be comfortable, probably be something more along the lines of this. Just because I don't like a lot of irritation and Bay Rum seems to be the only thing that does that, yet I love the scent. So it's kind of one of those weird things. As you guys can tell, I'm in no hurry. I'm just relaxing, enjoying a night, an evening with you guys online. You know, it's a fun time, it's a good time. <laughs> I'll try to post this to YouTube too. Sometimes it allows me to save the video, sometimes it doesn't. This time I'm actually gonna try to post this because I do like my first impressions video. It's nice to see what I thought then versus what I think maybe in a couple days or a couple weeks. So I'm really excited about that. But uh, let's see, you know what? I've got some other stuff too that I'll eventually be trying out. There's shave cream, lavender. One thing I did notice about the shave cream is it's not uh, like Taylor of Old Bond Street where it's extremely soft and almost like feels like whipped cream when you put your finger in it or like a yogurt. It's a little bit more stiff than that, but it smells fantastic. I'd say it smells almost exactly like Barista Man Reserve Lavender, which I love. It's my favorite lavender scent that I've used. And this smells great. And it's like in this little travel size. That's so kind of cool. Then I've also got a matching... Lavender, Rio Grande Lavender Aftershave Lotion. Kind of cool. And then we've got just the original scented beard oil, which I haven't used beard oil lately. My girlfriend doesn't really care for the holy black snake oil that I got. I love this stuff. It's a gunpowder and spice, so I thought she'd like it because she likes spice typically, but she does not like this. I mean, she hates hates this stuff um i like it but and i love how the bottle looks too it's very old school looking but i don't wear it because she doesn't like it it's kind of kind of a bummer i think i, I think there's a stopper on there that i'm not seeing oh derp i'm an idiot of course there's a stopper on it <laughs> There we go. A little bit goes a long way with beard oil. Ooh. 
I'm excited. Oh. It's, um, it's definitely got that oily consistency to it, but the smell is very, like, peppermint. But I like it. It smells really good. There's a couple things I typically like when I'm about to go to bed. I like mint a lot. And I like lavender a lot because obviously it helps me sleep. It's a really enjoyable scent. It's just one of those classics. Great for a nighttime shave. Lavender what? But the Barista and Man Reserve Lavender is, again, like you were saying, Eric, it's one of my favorites. It's just a very good, strong lavender scent. And um, the aftershave lotion and shave cream by Colonel Conk smells almost exactly like it. I wonder what the price points are on that. I'm not sure. I mean, I imagine they're cheaper, but I don't know. And I also don't know what the performance is like of those, so I can't speak to that. But I can tell you that my face feels great. It looks fantastic. I got a really close shave with this razor, so first impressions are going to... I'm just going to go ahead and say that I really like this razor. I think you can use a razor. If, if you have a bad first impression of it, you can use it multiple times to really get the hang of, of, its, of its angle and how you like it. But I think if on the first shave, you have an awesome experience with a razor, then you know what it's capable of doing if you do it right. And um, this feels really good. This was a surprise. I did not know this was coming when he originally sent it. And he's like, oh, hey, I may have included a razor for you, but do not look at anything about it. And I'm still not going to while I'm reviewing this. I'm not going to look up what other people's opinions are on this razor or anything like that. But the Conk DE, I really like. And I'm a mild blade kind of guy. Um, Reyes had given me his, or we traded for his um, Game Changer. I actually have it right here. His Razor Rock Game Changer, which is really cool. It's in this beautiful polished stainless steel, marine grade stainless steel, 316L. Um, and this is a beaut. Um, but I can almost bet you this is really cheap. Um, not that it feels cheap, because it doesn't. It actually feels like quality. The way that everything fits together feels like quality. I've used Mercure razors that have had issues with how they fit, how they look, the finish quality on them. And this looks to be really good. I mean, I'm not seeing anything on it that would be a cause for alarm. The blade alignment's really good. I didn't have any issues with having to adjust or fiddle with that. Um, with an Astra Superior Platinum Blade, really impressed. I like it. Um, oh, do you have all um, open comb razors? Is that what you're saying, closed comb? I like the straight bar closed comb type razors, though I do have a few that are open comb, like my Gillette Sheridan is a really cool one that's open comb. And I have a few of my single edge razors that are open comb. But anyways, guys, first impressions of this are great. Did not know I was going to be getting the, the mug. So that is really cool. I love mugs. I love places to store my soap. And what I think I might try to do on the second go around with this is put it in the microwave, melt it down, let it sit in there, and use this as my dedicated Colonel Conk soap. Because I think after this... It's nice to, like I said, I love using Williams Mug Soap. Once you get the performance down, once you know how to use a soap like that, it's fantastic. You just have to have glycerin, and you have to have patience. But that's part of shaving, is it's fun. You can turn a boring, lame chore of a hobby, or chore of a, of a task, into a hobby, something that's really enjoyable, something that's a lot of fun, something that you can just take a moment to really give back to yourself. I take it as a moment of, I've had a rough day at work. I want to get back to myself. Or I want to get on the day on the right foot. I'm going to just take some time to get up in the morning and, and just enjoy applying you know, a pre-shave and an aftershave and a great soap and all this other stuff. It's a good moment for me. It's kind of a zen moment that I really like. But um, <laughs> you're right. I've got a really decent... Here, I'll show you guys. I mean, that over there is pretty cool. I've got quite a few different products up here. It's starting to get full. I need to get me a second shelf, but, um, <laughs> whoa, close up. But yeah, it's, it's a nice collection. I've also got a shelf down here. I've got a wooden box full of stuff down here. I've got a second shelf in the guest bedroom. Originally I thought I was going to move all this stuff to the guest bedroom. I've pretty much taken over the bathroom now at this point. So 
don't think that's going to happen. But if we end up doing like a studio for videos, then it will be in the guest bedroom. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, I don't think I'm going anywhere. Yo, what's up? <laughs> uh, first line, shave in the house. But, but yeah, I am just thrilled with the products. I'm so far very impressed. You, when you use a glycerin soap, you don't expect a lot from it. 100% honest. I started off the hobby with glycerin-based pucks. I've used them occasionally. My dad actually loves the scent of a lot of my glycerin pucks over some of my um, shave soaps that I give to him. Um, his The tallow soaps that I give to him because I think he wants a more toned down scent. And usually you get that with glycerin. Though I have gone into the gadget company. I've smelled the lime puck and it smells great. So now I'll probably end up going buying that and the matching bottle since the bottles all look great. And they sit on this glass countertop at the gadget company with a window behind them so the light shines through. So the lime looks beautiful. And the other ones smell great. I've always thought about picking up the all. I'll probably just pick them all up for the price point. Probably just grab them all and have like a, a little area of my den dedicated to those bottles and the, and the stuff. Because I just, I really like it. Uh, first impressions, as you guys can see, I'm not disappointed. I'm actually really impressed. When your expectations are a little bit lower because you, you have this preconceived notion of glycerin. And then you use a product like this and it just lathers on beautifully it has no problems it wasn't thin it wasn't anything like that it just worked out great then um you typically have a tendency to keep coming back and get more so very impressed with the line of products that i tried today can't wait to try them out again i might even do it again tomorrow morning i don't know so you might be seeing two shave of the day posts one for the evening one for the morning with a slightly different setup but um, using the, most of these products so I'm real excited to do that, and you'll definitely be seeing more of this, because um, I really like this so far. I'm very impressed. For me, since I've got so many razors, I've got vintage razors, I've got new uh, market production razors like the Game Changer, I've got the Weber, I've got, I've ha I've owned, which I didn't care for to be honest with you, the Rex Ambassador. There's a few modern razors that I own, like the Mercure Progress, the Mercure 34C, 42C, etc. Um, <laughs> right? So many marks in this chat. <laughs> but um, really impressed with this. Um, I would say everything, I, I was going to say which one was kind of a standout in the first impressions, but everything was a lot better than I expected. I didn't have any notions of what this was gonna be like going in. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see that my face did not get any irritation whatsoever. It feels extremely smooth, so it got nice and close, but it was super mild. But you could hear the audio feedback. When this gets posted, you're gonna be able to listen through and you're gonna hear that audio feedback and it feels great. I love audio feedback on a razor. Um, and I like that it's lighter than my Weber PH. So I get a little bit more, I get less hand fatigue out of it, is what I'm saying with that. But anyways, guys, I know I've been rambling. This video's been going on forever. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. And uh, we're leading into Thursday, so the weekend's almost here. Can't wait. But I'm looking forward to posting more content soon, so please stay tuned to the page, because you guys know I'm super active on Instagram. It's actually my preferred platform, but I love posting some of the lengthier videos on YouTube. And you can adjust the quality there so it does seem to be a little bit better as far as watching stream or at watching material. But thank you guys for tuning in tonight. I know it's late, but I had a good turnout. And I'm always happy to see anybody pop in and watch these things because I do it more for myself. It's kind of a fun thing, a little side project thing. Um, so it's always fun to see that. And I hope that I get to go because the plan is, is to go to the Big Shave Southwest and maybe I'll get to see some of you guys in person if you end up going. Though when I posted my poll today, I didn't get a lot of yeses on that. I got a lot of no's, which kind of sucks because it'd be nice to see you guys in person. But I know it's a, it's a hell of a drive for a lot of you. And it's an expensive flight for the majority of you, myself included. Um, so, you know, maybe next year. Or maybe there's going to be another meetup locally that we can all you know, chill at. And if you're ever in Tulsa, if you're ever in Tulsa, just DM me. I'd love to hang out with you. I'd love to chat you up. We can go to some of the places in Tulsa that I know that are a lot of fun. 
Love to meet you guys in person. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great night. I will see you later, and thanks again for stopping by.